Namaskar. After a long, <clears throat> after a long hiatus, we have Sri Sanjay Dixit of Jaipur Dialogues joining us to talk about the work, its intent, the, the sudden activity, the controversies, and what have you. Without further ado, let's welcome the guest of the evening, Sanjay Dixit Ji. Sanjay Ji, Namaskar, and welcome to Be Guru's Channel. Namaste, Namaste, Shri Ji. Thank you very much. So, Sanjay Ji. The work board is suddenly in the news all over the place. There is one thing that happened in Tamil Nadu, then it, it blew up in, um, then there was a story that in 2014, in the waning days of the UPA2 government, that they had bequeathed a lot of properties to work board. All that is under review. Also in UP, the chief minister has ordered a review of all the work board properties claim. The interesting thing that we have found, sir, we started digging a little bit about the Tamil Nadu, uh, work board uh, claims of 251 properties and and we have some interesting findings once we have the entire list we will share but what up has found is the same thing with Tamil Nadu also there is serious overreach serious overreach so why do you think that work board thinks it can get away with lies oh that's <laughs> because i think the hindus don't seem to know what the intent is and that all that comes from uh, ignorance of the Islamic laws because the according to Islam the entire earth belongs to them and everybody here is an encroacher so whenever they claim a land actually they are claiming the land for Allah because Allah sits on all the land he is the one uh, who cares for the, the believers and unbelievers non-believers are all encroachers like uh, you had that pact of Omar that is called Zimma and uh, in that uh, you pay tax only to live that's all everything else belongs to the moments and um, in india thanks to uh, i should say ignorance thanks to uh, complete destruction of uh, urdu education among the hindus after the partition in fact there was such great anathema against urdu that uh, almost every hindu uh, deliberately stopped looking at Urdu as, a, as anything except an object of hatred. And that is uh, well understood because Urdu was used as some kind of a supremacist medium to propagate Pakistan. And we know that any everybody, every Hindu who lived in India who migrated from Pakistan, for him, the VV section of the country was a very painful idea that was not so for Muslims even those who got left behind they were very happy that they managed to get a piece of land a piece of territory for Allah so that is the theology that works here and uh, because uh, the Hindu leaders over the years were completely ignorant of how Islamic laws operate how the land grab operates so they were taking instructions or coaching or mentoring about Islamic laws from Islamists who led them uh, up the garden path, so to say. And that is how the 1995 Act got enacted. But even 1995 Act was not that draconian. It was made draconian in 2013 through the amendments. Because even the 1995 Act, when it was brought in, then again in 2010 through judicial interpretation, the term that was used for that the Waqf Act was meant for an interested person. And that interested person was interpreted by the court as a Muslim. That only a Muslim could be interested in Waqf. So the uh, entire reach of this Waqf Act was basically on the Muslims and on non-Muslims. You could always say that uh, it didn't apply to you. And... Uh, you could avail the jurisdictions of the civil court because basically it was said that if there is a dispute between the Waqf board and, an, and a non-Muslim, then civil court jurisdiction would apply. What they did in 2013 was that uh, they brought many other changes, but two main changes. And one of them was that this... Uh, interested person was changed to aggrieved person 
Now, an interested person is already judicially defined as anybody. But now, aggrieved person meant that uh, it could be a non-Muslim too. And that became significant. Why? Because a uh, large number of properties, uh, large number of properties, which were actually evacuee properties, and uh, those are vacated by Muslims who left for uh, Pakistan, mainly from uh, Punjab, which is now Punjab, Haryana, Himachal, all together, and uh, Uttar Pradesh, mostly Western Uttar Pradesh. So those evacuee properties were handed over to Waqf in 19, 1985 by the Rajiv Gandhi government. So all the people who were sitting on those lands, all Hindus, they suddenly became uh, captive to the, to, to the Waqf. And uh, then in 2013, they changed the definition to uh, what is called uh, interested person to aggrieved person. And uh, then they added another clause uh, that is called, uh, I think it is 115A or something, the section. I don't exactly remember which section. But uh, they gave it an overriding effect on every other law. So when you give it an overriding effect on every other law, basically you created a super law. It was done in 2013. And the Muslim community is so crafty that not only did they prevail over the Congress government to pass such a draconian amendment, but the BJP was also foolish enough to entrust this to another Muslim in their ranks, Shah Nawaz Hussain, who stood up in the parliament and supported every amendment. So you got a double jeopardy, basically. And about BJP and RSS, uh, their knowledge of uh, uh, the ways of Islam and uh, the ways of the Muslim leadership, I think it borders on the infantile. And uh, one example that you can see, <laughs> Mr. Mohan Bhagwat doing the rounds of mosques and uh, madarsas today and uh, be feeling very happy about getting the title of uh, Rashtra Pita and Rashtra Rishi from Amalana. So when you have this kind of uh, level of knowledge and, and the mountain of ignorance, then uh, these things can be done. It is only due to the internet revolution and the information revolution that has taken place through the social media that these things have started to come to light. And that is how these acts have got challenged, thanks to people like uh, Vishnu Jain and people like Ashwini Upadhyay, that uh, uh, they got on to the devices of this act and they have challenged it. And because they challenged it and then we talked about it, uh, I myself talked about this uh, work factor to Ashwini and to Vishnu on the Jaipur dialogues a number of times. The people have got so massively educated that now there is a huge churn and uh, they cannot defeat that churn. Maybe they can hold off for a little while, but in the end it will have to go because it is completely draconian, it is autocratic, it is anti-democratic. And um, it basically panders to the Islamic notions of supremacism. Yeah. So, Sanjay ji, is the Gyanwapi verdict the trigger for all this, do you think? Or what else was the trigger? Could have been the trigger. No, no, no. Gyanwapi is not a trigger for this. Gyanwapi is certainly not a trigger for this. Uh, because the Gyanwapi uh, waqf claims are uh, pre-1930. Uh, pre-2013. So uh, the, one of the attributes of the law is that unless it is specifically applied retrospectively, it will only operate prospectively. So Gyanwapi dispute is age old. So that uh, law doesn't apply there. And uh, mm, it, it is not even registered because 1995, they say that every work for, uh, property has to be registered. It did not even get registered under that. 
and uh, the plot that they were claiming is something else. It is actually the Bindu Madhav temple that they were showing. So that is uh, brought out very clearly in the judgment of the uh, district judge. He clearly showed that uh, the Waqf did not apply in this case. So it's not that. The Waqf Act had already been challenged. It had already been challenged uh, even before the uh, civil suit number 693 oblique 2021 on which all these incidents have happened in Kashi. Even before that, uh, the Waqf Act had been challenged. Now, what are um, the options now? Uh, so let's say that you go to the court, the 1995 Act is considered unconstitutional. And I will will that automatically mean 2013 also goes or will that have to be like one act, one amendment at a time? No, 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 no. They have say if the act goes uh, uh, as a whole, the 1995 act, then the 2013 amendment is part of that. It's infrastructure. Okay. That goes as a whole. But I doubt if the act will go as a whole. Only certain sections will be found unconstitutional and then uh, the doctrine of severability would be applied in uh, judicial parlance on judicial practice there is this doctrine called doctrine of severability so that if you challenge the constitutionality of an entire act and only certain sections are found to be unconstitutional then they are severed from the entire body so that's called the doctrine of severability so using the doctrine of severability i think certain draconian uh, sections you know, would have to be struck down or maybe if the government wakes up because this government has been uh, very very shy of uh, touching anything uh, relating to muslims even with a barge pole but now i think the pressure is mounting and uh, if uh, today's raids on pfi are any indication I have been saying that actually Amit Shah has been shackled for a very long time. He was shackled immediately after the CAA. After the, he brought in the CAA and he became very popular. In fact, the popularity of Amit Shah had started matching the popularity of Prime Minister Modi in the wake of uh, removal of uh, 370 and the enactment of CAA. And that probably led to his uh, shackling. <laughs> Now, I believe shackles have been removed. So, uh, PFI seems to corroborate uh, that conclusion which I made a few days ago. In fact, exactly five days back on 17th, I did this show saying that uh, Amit Shah has been given a free hand finally. <clears throat> uh, of course, that comes from a lot of uh, open source intelligence and a lot of inside information. Now, if that is the case, then we might see some movement over... Uh, the Waqf Act and things, but uh, if the what is called uh, the sudden love for uh, Islam that we see springing in Mohan Bhagwat, the way it had sprung at one time in uh, the earlier Sarasangha Chalak, KC Sudarshan, uh, then I, I don't know uh, how this is going to go. So I think we got to wait and watch. All right, sir. I think uh, it's time for us to take some questions, if there are any. So, first question is, secularism ka security guard. Can central vista be claimed by the work board? Technically, yes. But then there is also a Supreme Court judgment, which came this year, earlier this year. It's called the uh, Rajasthan Work Board versus the Jindal Source Limited. And in that, the Supreme Court laid down that uh, a nexus to the source will have to be established. One. Uh, and the second, the jurisdiction of the higher courts cannot be barred because uh, it bars the court of uh, um, the uh, Act, Waqf Act, actually bars the jurisdiction of all courts. It says all courts jurisdiction is barred. Uh, all courts does not include higher courts, it said the Supreme Court. Therefore, uh, the jurisdiction of the higher courts will very much apply. So these two, uh, 
exceptions now have been made and therefore central vista technically can be claimed but uh, it won't last next question from mr saptarshi why the middle class hindu doesn't even want to discuss the muslim phenomenon i, I don't know mr saptarshi uh, how you come to this conclusion because uh, i think uh, the discussion in india and especially in the parts that i live is uh, very very loud these days and it's everywhere it's in the newspapers especially vernacular newspapers if i um, i read in the newspapers three or four of them every day in fact five six of them every day and uh, these issues are getting discussed uh, very very loudly and uh, it's all over the social media too so uh, i don't quite agree with your observation next question please satish siri 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 annavar what is the remedy the remedy is raising your voice that's what we are doing you already challenged the <laughs> work for it's there in delhi high court i am going to challenge it myself in a few days and uh, there will be a host of petitions and that's the way to go Rama Rama Madi wants to know Namaste sir how come work board can take uplands unlawfully but to get them set right it will take decades if not centuries that is because of the peculiar powers that it has been given that uh, uh, it has the power to register anything and not even tell somebody that your uh, land has been registered under the waqf because they did some survey surreptitiously or clandestinely then they find some land they put it in their survey register and then they inform the landholder they don't even inform landholder means the government they inform the government or the government body but they don't inform the tenant the person in whose name the land record stands so this is a provision that is completely unconstitutional because uh, the one party this party to the dispute one party to the dispute has actually got all the right and the burden of evidence is shifted to the other person so that is against the basic uh, uh, what is called the natural uh, justice principle so it will have to go and uh, we are putting pressure now you see the kind of discussion that are taking place when we started talking about waqf nobody was talking about it but after the first discussions with vishnu jain on waqf on the jaipur dialogues after that i think uh, the word spread the flood gates opened yes you could say so next question please gaurav wants to know ask sanjay sir i am really inspired by the hold of hindi language you have i subscribed to his jd long back he sounds posh should learning llb help an individual to protect his slash her land having an llb is always helpful because uh, ultimately all disputes uh, end up in the realm of law so uh, i would suggest that if you have the, the possibility of acquiring a law qualification go for it by all means i did it while i was in service awesome next question please raguram chadalavada wants to know don't you think we should challenge the formation of the apmplb because AIMP. only muslims uh, yeah all india muslim personal law board because only muslims enjoy a separate personal law board that deals exclusively with their personal laws well all india pers- muslim personal law board is not a statutory body it's not a government body it's a private body which uh, uh, seems to act as if it's a statutory body having plenary powers of the government or of the state it's not that it's just a private body that uh, Uh, tries to show off uh, as if uh, it controls uh, all the personal law of the country it doesn't next question please 
Bhuvan Katha wants to know, is the work board above law? In the Tiruchindurai case, which work board claimed temple lands also claiming they have owned the village since 1956, is this an illegal land grab? Yes, it is absolutely an illegal land grab. If they say that they own it since 1956, then it won't hold. Because in 1956, this 1995 law did not exist. It was then the 1954 law that was uh, in operation. In, under 1954 law, they could not have done this. Next question from Magnet Ranga. How can the BJP win the perception game against the seculars? Uh, first of all, it has to want to win. Does it really want to win that game? In fact, uh, probably the BJP is uh, more keen on uh, looking more secular than the others, than even the Congress. Uh, it's uh, one of their old, especially uh, RSS thing, that they are better seculars. <laughs> so, so if they, they want to win the perception game, first of all, they have to, they have to be wanting to win it. I don't think they're wanting to win it. And last question. Sachin Sharma wants to know, do you think instead of via courts, will the government dare to change the act by themselves or will wait for courts only to be safe? Government can anytime bring amendments as it's anyway an act from the government only. Yes, government they, or can. Courts? they can bring an uh, amendment anytime. But uh, the record of this government suggests that... Uh, it doesn't want to do anything to upset the apple cart. In fact, uh, even in places where the Hindu side has uh, very good chances of winning the court cases, it uh, delays them indefinitely by not filing replies. Classic example, the challenge against the AMU or the challenge against the Minority Commission Act. They don't even file reply. In fact, in Minority Commission, when the court started imposing cost on them, they filed a reply and the next hearing they withdrew it. And this hmm. one will come again. <laughs> <laughs> they got a mouthful from the court, but then hmm. it doesn't affect the state. Hmm. They're thick skin. All right, Sanjay ji. Thank you so much. Uh, we are going to wait and see how this plays out. And perhaps in a few weeks time, we'll be inviting Sanjay Ji to come back and talk on this specific topic. But it is also possible that we might be inviting him for many other topics. Sanjay Ji, always a pleasure to have you on our channel, sir. Thank you very much and Namaskar. Thank you. Namaskar. Dhaniwa.